Welcome in everyone. Welcome to the Crowned Life and um, I hope you are feeling cozy and comfortable here in my home and you know I just thought I would create this atmosphere where you feel like you can you know pull up a chair, sit down because today we're going to talk about questions that count and this is a viewer inspired question. Um, recently I was doing a live broadcast and I just happened to mention, um, you know, when you're dating and you're getting to know someone, you know, what are quality questions that you should be asking? Because a lot of people don't, they don't ask those questions. And then, you know, they wonder why later, um, you know, they, they went down a rabbit hole, they shouldn't have gone down. And they're wondering like, how did I not see this or know this? Um, it's because, you know, maybe these were questions that should have been asked earlier on when you were getting to know that person. And although, you know, these are not sexy questions to ask, not very flirtatious, right? Might be a buzzkill during a date. Well, um, you know, they're going to avoid a lot of pain later on, a lot of unnecessary pain. <laughs> um, and I think that because the questions aren't sexy, and people don't want to kill the moment, you know, um, that's why they don't ask them or they're afraid, you know, well, what if this person, I'm just getting to know them. I don't want to run them off. What if, um, they say something that I, I don't want to hear. I'm not ready to deal with this. Or what if this opens up a can of worms, you know, um, insecurity, right? So, um, they don't ask the questions. That's why. Um, but I will say if there's enough natural chemistry between you and that person, then you can ask these questions and, you know, you'll survive, right? <laughs> um, you'll survive this process and you'll find out, more importantly, more important than chemistry is their natural compatibility that's going to keep you guys going because, yeah, chemistry is important up front, but over the long term, you can't keep that, you know, flame burning when there's no emotional or spiritual compatibility over the long term. And so um, asking these questions is going to ensure that you are able, you have what it takes to um, make sure that this relationship can stand the test of time. Now, the main key in these questions is for you to find out the intent behind uh, people's actions. Now, I got this confused for a while. I'm going to admit it. You know, there was um, a time in my life when I used to like really be like, oh, love is action. Love is action. Love is not a, just a feeling. It's action. And there's some truth to that. There really is. Here's the problem. It's more. It goes even deeper, I've learned. Okay. It's not just an action. It's the intent behind the actions. So... Let me give you this for an example. Um, there are a lot of people right now who are in loveless marriages. They made a commitment and technically, um, logistically, physically, they're honoring that commitment, okay? But their heart has checked out of the building. Their emotions have checked out of the building. Who knows? Who knows? Maybe they're having an aff affairs in their mind with, you know, people online or, you know, hey, don't even get me going down that road. That's, a, <laughs> that's bad. But you get my drift. Like, just because you're, you know, engaging in the action of being committed and staying in a marriage, it really doesn't mean that there's love there. Because what's the intent behind staying in that marriage? If it's not love, you know, for the other person, it could be that um, it's coming from a very selfish place. This person is afraid of avoiding personal loss. This person is wrapped up in their ego and self-concern and self-interest. And that's why they're staying in the marriage. It's not really for uh, the other person's benefit or even the family's benefit. Maybe it's um, for selfish reasons they're staying in a loveless marriage. So that's just an example be aware of the sometimes unspoken intentions behind actions. Don't just assume 
ask, right? Um, and so what kind of questions are, are, are good to ask um, in the early stages of dating? Um, like I said in my live broadcast, um, right out the gate, you need to find out <laughs> what they're looking for in a relationship because um, the reality is, and I know, you know, I mean, I'm not telling you anything you don't already know, right? But let's just state the obvious. There are a lot of people who are just looking to get laid. That's all they want. They want a good time. They want to chase the next thrill. And if you're not about that, well, that needs to get established sooner than later. Otherwise, you're going to get into a dynamic where, um, you know, you've invested a lot into this person and you're having a conversation that, frankly, you know, you shouldn't need to have, which is, um, when are we going to take this relationship to the next level? Oh, what's the next level? I just thought we were having fun. Uh, yeah, you need to find that out before you've slept with them and you know, giving them your heart, your mind, your emotions, um, hell, even maybe your money. Oh God, you know, um, you need to find out if this person is looking for something serious or something casual. You need to find out if they're looking to get into a commitment or they are looking for something no strings attached. And I'm going to say as a side note, just as a side note, because uh, I know a lot of women watch my channel and commitment is really important to me because women, we tend to have a value system of valuing security, loyalty. Um, and a lot of men uh, seem to value their freedom. And not, not that that's a terrible thing, but both can get into very dark zones, right? And I do think if you're dealing with some wounded, unhealed men, uh, beta males, maybe fake alphas, um, people who are demonstrating narcissistic character traits, uh, the freedom seeking gets into a dark zone. And uh, regardless of that, I just wanna say something I've learned as a woman uh, regarding men and commitment is that he's either in or he's not. There's really nothing you can do to make a man want to commit to you or anybody, okay? If he's not about commitment, he's not about commitment and you need to, you need to accept this sooner than later. Um, you might think that the issue was with you, but it's really with him. It's about how he views commitment. If he doesn't see commitment as something empowering, that, hey, I've got somebody partnering with me in life, supporting me as I'm supporting them. We're double teaming. We're coming together. We're joining forces. Like That's how we tend to see it as women, right? Um, but if they see this as, oh, you're going to be a parasite. You're going to drag me down. You're going to leech off of me. And, then, and this is some dark shadow shit that a lot of men are operating out of because of their own insecurity. Um, you can't. You can't fix that for them. That's their soul healing work that they've got to do. Um, what I'm telling you is the reason why you will see men move on and commit to lesser women than you. Um, some of you might have been through this. I've been through this, okay, where you gave this man your mind, body, soul, and how many months, years later, you're like, okay, let's, let's, let's get committed, like, let's get married, or let's take this to the next level, or, you know, whatever. And he doesn't want to do it. And you're like, what? And you end up moving on with your life because you want to, you know, you want to settle down, you want to have a family, whatever. You find somebody who's interested in doing that. And then later on, you catch up with this guy and the woman that he, maybe the woman he did marry or the woman he did settle down with and you find out or the women he's been involved with and you realize like these were lesser women in terms of these were not women who loved him at the level that you did. And you're like, what in the hell? Why did this guy commit to her and not me? She's not even half the woman I am. Everything that I brought to the table and gave to him, why did he give that to her? Because it has nothing to do with you. It has nothing to do with um, who's worthy and, and who's not, who's qualified or, or uh, more qualified than the other. That is not how these men operate. They're going to commit to the woman who is around when they make up their mind they're ready to commit. 
So in order for a man to commit, you're going to have to, you know, he's going to first have to want to commit. He's got to have the desire to want to commit. He's got to have to value commitment and we can't make him want or desire or value this. He's got to come to this conclusion himself. And if you have this conversation early on in the relationship and realize, aha, he does not value commitment. This man sees commitment as a hindrance to his freedom or, you know, heaviness, responsibility. He has a negative connotation. Uh, you need to check out of that, right? Sooner than later, save yourself some pain. Don't let your time be wasted. Um, if he's looking for a commitment, then he's going to articulate that. He's going to also follow up with plans. He's going to back those words up with action. But it's good for him to articulate if he does want a commitment. Okay, what does that look like to you? And unfortunately, a lot of men can't articulate this. Even if they say, oh, yeah, I do want to settle down sometime. I am looking to start a family or, you know, I am looking to marry again eventually. Um, okay, what does that look like to you? Um, because who knows? He might not even know what it looks like. A lot of men don't because they haven't really processed at that level. Or it's kind of the processing in their mind is like some kind of ideal. Um, well, when I meet Mrs. Perfect, I mean, eventually, maybe, right? You need to dig into that. You need to unpack that, okay? Um, like, for example, get them to articulate like, okay, so if you're in a commitment, like how often would we be seeing each other a week? How often would we be in contact? I mean, if we're in a monogamous relationship, um, how often would we be getting together? And um, what does our togetherness time look like, you know? Or um, at what point would you move in with somebody? Uh, at what point would you wanna see the relationship develop into marriage? Um, what does marriage look like to you? Um, and like I said, if he really does want to commit, he's going to be able to express that. He's going to have a plan. He's going to follow through with it. More importantly, follow through. <laughs> okay. And be observant of vagueness in these conversations. Um, like he wants it, but he has no plan. Like I was saying earlier, um, you got to ask yourself, is this guy really serious or he just hasn't really thought this through? There's a lack of depth, you know, either way. And that's a red flag. It really is. Another good question would be, um, what are you looking for? This question of what are you looking for in a relationship is pretty damn important and it can be a deal breaker. And I think that's why a lot of people don't uh, want to ask it. They don't want to put the pressure on somebody else. Um, but, and, and, you know, if you say, what are, what are you looking for? What are you pursuing? What are you hoping for in your life? What would you like to see happen in a relationship? Um, it's very revealing. Um, and yeah, if it is a deal breaker because you realize this person just wants to get laid and have a good time and as soon as you have needs that need to be met, um, they're out. They're off to the next person that's, you know, going to give them the next high, <laughs> is going to feed their ego, give them attention, adore them, admire them, all of that. You know, once they've gotten what they needed out of you, they're on to the next person. Well, be thankful. You figured this out sooner than later and your time wasn't wasted. Now, later on, you know, assuming that you, you pass that hurdle, you know, and you both had that conversation and you established that you are looking for the same thing out of a relationship. Um, you both want something serious. Well, then talk about, well, what are your needs on a physical, financial, mental level? And what are your values on an emotional, spiritual level? And, and I think a lot of people hide this stuff, okay? They, we both, we, we know at some level that we want a life partner for 
yeah, financial reasons. Who doesn't? I mean, but we're supposed to act like we don't. Oh, no, I'm good. I can take care of myself. Well, if you have two productive and responsible people, um, it, it should help you financially. And, and why wouldn't you want that? Who would want to go it alone when they don't have to? Okay, but communicate about that, you know, um, mental, you know, if, if you're a thinker, and this other person is not, they're a doer, um, they're a feeler, uh, you got to talk about that. What are your mental needs? You know, I'm very much a thinker and a communicator. So for me to be with somebody who either doesn't think much, or they put me down for thinking by saying, Oh, you think too much or analyzing again. Uh, you know, why are you being making this so serious? You know, that's like not going to work. <laughs> okay. Um, and that's something that needs to be established there. Hey, I'm a talker. I'm a thinker. Are you okay with that? You know, what are your needs? Um, on a physical, financial, mental level and, um, Emotionally and spiritually, I mean, this gets into emotional quotient. Um, this gets into being sensitive and compassionate and considerate of other people's needs. What are your emotional needs? Do you get down sometimes and you need somebody to be considerate that, you know, sometimes you, you, you need somebody to listen to you. Just listen with a compassionate ear. How about spiritual values. Some people, they, they operate like they don't have a spiritual bone in their body. You start talking about God or spirit or the universe or astrology, and, and it's going to get into a deer in the headlight zone. Can you live with that? And I'd be really careful about the emotional and spiritual values, making sure that there's compatibility there. Because remember, as I said earlier, the aforementioned stuff the physical, financial, mental needs have a lot to do with chemistry that are great initially, but they won't carry the relationship for the long term. You're looking for a long term relationship. There has to be more than chemistry. Chemistry is important, but if you don't have the emotional and spiritual compatibility, it's a no go. And that needs to get established early on through the question. So another Another good question to ask is what goals do each of you have in mind by partnering with one another? Again, I think we try to hide this. Um, we live in a culture where people are supposed to be ashamed of needing somebody else. Like you're supposed to take pride in I can do it myself. Um, but if you can do it yourself, then why are you like trying to partner with somebody to just go be single, you know? Um, and I really think this goes back to what I've talked about in other videos where um, in our culture, we've got two extremes where you have people who are independent or they're codependent, but they don't know how to practice middle healthy ground, which is interdependency. And this is where we have a conversation about interdependency. What is it that I can add to you to help you reach your goals as you're adding to me to help me reach my goals? Right, as opposed to the opposite extremes, which is with a codependency. How can I be a parasitic upon you because I'm too weak to stand on my own and you do the same, you lean on me, you, you get parasitic on me because you can't stand on your own either, right? Or we go to the other extreme of, I don't need anybody. I don't need any help. I got it all together myself, right? You gotta find out. Okay, we're wanting to life partner together. How do we do that in a healthy interdependent way where we're both strengthening one another from a place of strength? And again, you know, this is not a sexy conversation, but you know, having a long term plan is going to ensure that you don't waste your time and you don't go through any kind of unnecessary pain in making, you know, a bad investment. In a, in a person, you know, that has no intent of partnering at the level that you want to offer yourself. They're not going to share sacrifice. They're not going to match effort. Something that I have learned is that 
a lot of people create confusion within themselves and within with within others when they're dating because what they really want is um, companionship, connection, and sex, but they don't want to put the work in for it. And that's something you got to recognize because again, we're going back to what I said earlier, the intent, the intent, the intent <laughs> behind the actions. Okay, so you you want companionship, you want connection, you want sex, but what are you willing to do for it? And sometimes people are willing to do things um, just just only be, so they can get something out of it. It's not really out of sincere interest in partnering with another person or elevating another person as that other person's elevating them. It's not about that at all. So, this is why once you establish what you both want out of a relationship, then you need to establish what you're both willing to do to achieve that. It's also important to ask questions that help you to get to know their relational skills. Where are they at relationally? Um, questions like, and of course, you're not going to ask this on a first date, right? But as you really are um, trying to establish intimacy and a bond and really get to know them on a deeper level, ask questions like, really vulnerable questions like, you know, what are your deepest hurts? Can they admit that? Because I mean, that takes a very strong person to admit weakness. And if you see that this person can admit weakness, okay, this person has some strength about them. If they're trying to hide it, like, what do you mean? Of course, we all go through pain. I mean, we don't need to dwell on it. Okay, that's, <laughs> Ooh, check out of the building, check out red flag, okay? Um, another question would be, uh, do you find it hard to admit when you've made mistakes? If so, why? So again, pay attention, observe, because if they're trying to hide flaws, you need to be concerned about this, okay? It could be really a sign this person is trying to wear a mask or trying to put up a, a false identity, you know, so that you fall in love with a mask, not the person underneath it. And maybe, yeah, come, that's coming from a place of insecurity that if you know who I really am, you wouldn't have anything to do with me. Beware of that stuff. Like me personally, I'm not afraid of people who have problems. I'm more afraid of people who hide them. We all have problems. That's like no big surprise. I'm, I'm not afraid of people who are imperfect. Again, shocker, right? There's my sarcasm. <laughs> what is disturbing to me is that you are pretending like you don't or you don't want to discuss it or, you know, you want to change the subject or deflect. Um, you want to downplay it. You want, you want me to look the other way. Um, and maybe that's because that's how you operate. You look the other way on, you know, your flaws. That's concerning. Another question you could ask is, what do you do to get affirmation or admiration from others? By the way, some of these questions here are very, very telling. Like they could really tip you off to whether or not you're dealing with a narcissist or at least somebody who is demonstrating narcissistic character traits. Right, because a narc is going to be somebody who seeks after affirmation and, and um, admiration. And again, to some degree, it's like, well, that's human. We all need affirmation and um, we all want admiration. That's a human thing. But how far do you take this? What are you willing to do to get that acknowledgement from other people? And how does it feel when you don't get it? Another question is, is it okay for people to be different from you? To think different, to live different? If yes, then at what point is it not okay? I mean, at what point does it cross the line and you know, you're like, uh, this is too different for me. I can't, I can't be in a relationship with this person or I can't get along with this person because they're just too different. And I think that honestly, we all have that. We all have like, oh, I just, I've got this pet peeve and if people start doing that, I just can't deal with it. But again, be open about it, be open about it. And um, 
how do they handle it when people have a difference of opinion? That's a good question to ask. And in what ways have you grown and changed? In what ways are you currently doing this? I think this is very insightful because I think one of my complaints as a single person is, is coming to the awareness that a lot of people, they just simply do not do the self-awareness and um, the introspection, you know, I should say. They, they, they don't um, engage in any kind of personal development. And uh, when you start realizing that people are not growing, they're, they're ingrown at best, um, which is the worst, um, that's, that's very concerning. That's something that you need to be aware of. You know, know this as soon as possible. Is this a person who likes to develop as a person and grow and evolve? Um, or is this somebody who's very rigid, stuck in the mud? What you see is what you get. Um, it's it's going to be the same song, millionth verse, 10 years from now. Um, this is about getting beyond, you know, the 3D and into the 5D. Is this somebody who is trying to actualize their highest potential in life? Or are they just content with a mundane? Are they content with status quo, mediocrity? And again, if you're not, if you're not about that 3D life and they are, then better to know that. It's, it's really a, a lot of people who are not, are not about the 5D, you know, are really into the surface of things rather than the substance. And again, if you're about the substance, if you're about character development and they're not, um, be aware because a lot of times they're gonna feel the pressure of you being different and they're gonna push back and make it out like, you know, there's something wrong with you for um, having higher ideals. I've dealt with that, you know. I've had people tell me, um, you expect too much, your standards are too high, I feel like I can never make you happy, I can never live up to your standards. Why? Because they don't want to be challenged. They don't wanna be pushed out of their comfort zone. They don't want to grow. They want to stay stuck and stagnant and they want somebody to just keep accepting them. Being, you know, 80 years old and at the same level they were at in their 20s. Unacceptable, you know? <laughs> anyway, Another question would be what frustrates you the most about people in relationships and, you know, how do you deal with it? Kind of along the same lines of the questions I asked earlier. Um, here's another one kind of plays into questions about someone's emotional values, their emotional quotient, their relational, their, their level of relational competency. Uh, you ask them to tell you about their experiences with ghosting, stonewalling, silent treatments and what are their thoughts on these things so yeah i mean if you're dealing with somebody who copes with being challenged or um hits a brick wall in a relationship and their solution is i'm just going to shut down and i'm going to give this person a silent treatment i'm going to ghost them i'm going to stonewall them well there you go but if they've dealt with that on the other hand, then perhaps they've got more sensitivity to it and they understand, oh, that's not cool. There's, there's a better way to deal with people than to just like ignore them. And I should say ignore them without addressing the issue. I'm not saying like if this is somebody who is repeatedly asking you to, you know, explain what has already been explained, okay? This is somebody who didn't get closure because you just, refuse to entertain the conversation, right? That's somebody who's not got a lot of relationship competency. Questions that you probably need to ask yourself. Do they embrace their own mistakes and failures? If you've asked the questions that I, you know, suggested, then you should know this by now. You should know the answer to this. Or did you pick up on hidden shame in their responses? Do they use silence as a power play? Is conflict used to maintain superiority? 
And that's going to tell you a lot about who you're dealing with. And I'll tell you what, a lot of this information that I got, by the way, is coming from this book, um, which I got at the library. You could probably get it at your library. I'll put it in the links below and I'll put it linked in over at my blog if you're interested. Okay. It is Eight Dates by John Gottman and um, Julie Schwartz Gottman. And John Gottman has been a very well-known name with, you know, marriage counseling research in the last 20 plus years. Okay. This is a very solid guy, written a lot, a lot of books. And I've heard other people really recommend this as, you know, a, a must have book. There's a lot of books you can get on relationship, but this is on the must have list. So, um, I am reading this book and I'm going a little bit deeper into it. I'm probably going to put another a video out soon um, where we get into more questions. Let's say if you're coupled, actually coupled, okay? Because this video is more about if you're dating somebody and getting to know somebody. But um, the questions that are outlined in this book is, you know, okay, you are actually in a relationship with somebody. You might even be married, okay? What kind of questions do you need to discuss? And I'll, I'll give you, a, you know, kind of a bit of a spoiler um, here and let you know it's it's on eight areas of life that you need to discuss. Um, number one, trust and commitment, which we kind of covered in this video, right? Number two, addressing conflict. Well, we a little bit touched on that too. We're gonna go deeper when we get to the this book, but uh, three, sex and intimacy. Four, work and money. Five, family. Six, fun and adventure, seven, growth and spirituality, and eight, dreams. So I hope you'll join me for that next video. And until next time, I'm wishing you not only all the best, but yeah, that you have some quality conversations and uh, ask some questions that count. Yeah, dare to do that. <laughs> all right, y'all, till next time, be blessed.